Okay, so in this video, I want to show you how to draft a short pattern. For a short pattern, you need what we call color, stand, and depth. And this is what that simply means. The distance between here and here. So I'm, here I have a female shirt. And um, I'll just measure out this for you. This gives me four, which is the color stand from here to here. distance between here and here there's a join in here so if I measure this this gives me about four and then from there I have about five for the depth so you have four plus five so meaning that this is more often than not about one centimeter smaller than this distance between here and here so this is a male shirt And I'll just measure for you. So here, the color stand is three. And the other part is four. So it's about one centimeter different. So just bear that in mind. It can vary according to, I mean, how you want the depth. But usually the upper one is usually like one centimeter more. And you might want to measure the wing to see what you're going to have. From the color stand joining to the end of the wing and this is about eight so in the middle here you have five and here about three centimeters has been added to it this is of course based on your choice and um, design variation but is what to me is worth um, mentioning okay so this is the stand and if you look at the shirt here You have the button stand and the part that's going to take in the button hole. So, if I fold this away, I have my exact center front. That's the same line and the about one inch here given for the button stand and wrap. So, if I fold this away, I have my center front here. And if I fold from this bit here, all the way down, that's also my center front there. So what I'm trying to establish here is that they have made provision for button stand and button wrap. And by the time they wrapped it, it came back to about one, one inch. So chances are that for this, they probably used two and a half, which is more often than what is used, but then it can vary depending on the style. That you're trying to achieve here so if i use this to illustrate again if i fold from here away that's my center front and then the button stand and wrap is added on both sides yeah so in other words when we're working with our patterns we need to extend the center front to make provision for this button to have a stay. And when we are measuring our neck, when we measure the actual neck, we also need to make provision from this point here to this point here for the button to stay right there too. So that it can fold nicely and this can just cover right nicely on the edge. So now I'm going to go ahead and get out my pattern. So, so now the method is similar for both male and female. As long as you understand the basic things you need, you need your neck circumference, you need your butt, um, color stand and then depth, and you need, of course, your, your button stand and wrap in place. So whether children, whether male, the only difference maybe in children is the width of the color stand and the color depth. Yeah, so. Now I'm going to bring up my pattern and continue this. In making your shirt color pattern, you need obviously your bodies, whether the male bodies or the female bodies or even the children block. And then um, you need to measure your neck. So to measure your neck, 
If you have a natural dart that's coming from the shoulder, then you need to transfer it to a suitable position. That will help you work around it and design your colors without disrupting you. So in this case, I'm gonna close this permanently. I'm going to move it elsewhere. So, the idea is that on a normal day, I could have sewn this dart, and by sewing it, it would have given me my bust looking this way. You can see the bust starting to take shape. But because I'm going to design around there, and I need that thing to just move away from there, that thing called that. So I'm just going to transfer it into this line. If you're not sure how to move your dots around, then you need to watch the video showing you how to move your dots around. Okay, so I'm going to join these two together. I'll just stick it together with a tape so that I can measure the neck properly. So what I'm sticking together here is the NP to NP. The neck point of the front and the neck point of the back touching each other. The shoulder point of the back and the front also touching each other. So the next thing I'm going to do is get a flexible curve and measure to know what the neck circumference is. So in this case, I have about 17 for half of the neck. So I'm going to work with that. You need to note though that this is half of your body. So we're going to cut and fold to get the full version of the color. You also need to note here that this right here is the center front. And to make a, a shirt, you need a button stand and wrap. So, this is what I mean. You need to make provision for this from your center front. So, I'm going to go ahead and add another paper to make room for my button stand and wrap here. And I'm going to note what I measured around here, which is 17 and then we'll continue our construction from there. So, you need to extend from the center front forward, and in this case, I've added two and a half inches. So, what I did was get another plain paper, put it, secure it under this point here, and then secure it with a glue, um, this just makes it tidier instead of using paper tape. So I secured that bit and then I measured forward one inch on this line and then another one inch and then another half. So that makes um, provision for our button stand and wrap. So, and then I cut out the excess paper. So literally what we're trying to do is this, fold away the half inch first to tidy up the edge and then fold away on this line, make the second fold and let it come right back to your center front. This is our regular center front line. And there would have made provision for our button stand and wrap. So this is half of how our body is, so you need to make the same provision for the other side so that you have one for the button hole and the other one to place the button. So Right here is our center front from this point here, CF, and this distance between here and here with our four button stand. Good. So, if you recall earlier, we marked 17 for the neck circumference to this point, we have not m measured here. So. I'm going to get another paper now, which is this, to 
continue the draft. So now let's start marking the designing the color. So from here, I'll call this edge of my paper one. And from one to two will be 17. How did I get 17? That is the neck measurement that I did. So I'll call this my two. Now, from one up here, I'll use this thing. So here's my one to two. So from one, I'm going to mark color stand, and in this case, I'll use four centimeters. So I'm going to square that across. And this is my two, don't forget. And so from here, I'm also going to measure my depth and I'm going to make that five. So I'm going to also square across. So I'm stopping at 17 and I'm going to join two, two, three. So I'm going to call this my three. This line here. So I just put my three here. Okay. So remember, this is our color stand and depth, and that's sorted. So now I need to get my four. So to get four, I kind of did my divisions that I need here. Half neck, which we measured earlier, and then the color stand I used for the color depth five. So color stand and depth makes nine. And then measure three quarter of 17. 17 meaning this next size. So three divided by four times 17. And that gives me two, 12.75. So I'm going to try and get four. And it's going to fall somewhere along this line. And that's going to be my measurement of 12.75. So I'll call that four. And I'm going to also square four all the way up. So there you are, that line over there. And so the color is beginning to take shape. This is our center back here. Just need you to see clearly. What I've done so far. Okay. So here we have one, two, three, and we have four. Okay. So I want to get 0.5, so I'm just going to step up from 2 here, up by 0 0.5, and I'll call that 5. Now the line here that divides my color standard depth, I'll call this point here 6. So one, two, three, four, three quarter of the neck, and um, five, step up a bit, 0 0.5 from here, and then six. So I'm going to mark my seven on this point. And from seven, I'm going to step inwards by 0 0.75 to mark my eight. So here we have seven and here we have eight. So now I'm going to connect 
my four to my five with a slight curve. And from five, I'm going to measure my buttons down. So, if I pick my pattern again, remember this part is my button stand. So I'm going to measure from here to here what I have. And in this case, I have 2.5, which is one inch. So, following this five here, I'm just going to follow that curve and measure 2.5 centimeter. So here I have marks now my bottom stand. And from point eight here, I'm just going to give myself a nice curve. So I'm going to use my flexible curve again. You don't have to use flexible curve always. You can actually get any curve that will do the same job. I just connect this this way so here is what I have now and it's beginning to take shape so now I'm going to do the wing so let's just grab our shed again and do a bit of explanation so right here what you have here this curve here is what I have done here so the next thing is to do this wing. So you can see if I were to put this straight down. Okay, and fold this away. Then that would be this without any wing straight up. So now I'm just going to give a bit of wingy hair for the shape. So here, if you measure, this is my fold, so on this point here, if I measure, I can have an idea of what to use for my wing. In this case, it's about 1.5 centimeters. So meaning, you want to move up from here, about 1.5 centimeter. So, if I grab this again, and I measure, You find that here is about eight, eight, and the distance between here and here is nine. So meaning that this wing is longer. So if I measure this, we have about four, and if I measure this at the edge, we have about six. So. You can decide to follow suit, but really this is a design feature that is influenced by taste. You really don't have to, it doesn't have to be exactly that. So I just take this up as my guide for my wing. And so this is what I have done so far. I stepped out here by about 1.5 centimeters and I went up. So I made this slightly higher at the edge. Than this distance here and so what I'm going to just do is from this point I'm going to connect here and then I'm going to blend to this point the line coming from four not all the way so I'm just using a slight curve to achieve that bit
and here I have my shirt collar. So in this case, you can actually sew this shirt collar as one piece without having a cut here. But if you want to have a cut here, then you need to come to six and we need to do another alteration. So from six, we're going to step higher by 0.75 and then we're going to connect it back to line four. So I'll do that now. Let me just clean this center back. So from six here, I'm stepping up by 0 0.75. I'm just gonna connect that slightly cut to line four, this line here, not all the way. Okay, so here is my 10. My 10 comes from six upwards by 0 0.75. And I'll show you how to cut this piece. So you separate this along this line, the six, nine, six, cut to line touching four and separate that part. And then cut out the wing and extend it all the way down there. And that will be the end. Okay, no, not the end actually. You need to cut off from line 10 to line 4. So, this is going to be our color. So, you need to cut this unfold and then cut this unfold. I need to add seam allowance, I need to add interlining to stabilize it. I recommend you cut your inter interlining without seam allowance, so using this piece because you don't want to sew on your interlining. And that will make the end of the pattern making for shirt collar. Thank you.